supporting your tomatoes coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joey Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Well, when it comes to growing tomatoes, you have to support them. And there's several options. Let's take a look at some of the options that we use in the garden every year. There's many different types of tomato cages you can use in your garden. Now the advantage to a tomato cage is to get your tomato off the ground and allow the fruit to have air circulation and, and as much light as possible. We have several tomato cages here that we use in the garden. Uh, there are some tomato, the tomato cages can run from a few dollars to several dollars depending on what you get. Here we've got a traditional square tomato cage. It folds up very nicely for storage in the garage or the basement after the season. Over here is more of an industrial strength tomato cage. As you can see it's got a much thicker gauge wire ring around it. Uh, and the next here we've got your traditional tomato cage that you see at all garden centers and home improvement stores. A few dollars uh, and it is recommended that when you stake your tomato plant in the, when you put the tomato plant in the ground you want to stake this with just a fence pose, a uh, piece of lumber just to hold the tomato cage in place that it doesn't tumble over on your plant and snap your plant off. Now we do have a homemade version of a tomato cage. It's just uh, metal wire that's been rubber coated and we did stake these down. The only disadvantage to this particular uh, design is when the fruit is down at the bottom of the plant, you can't get your hand in to pick it. You have to go through the top. But uh, other than that, it was a good sturdy structure for your tomato plant. Now all of these, you don't have to go buy tomato cages. All of these were found along the side of the road. We found over 80 to 90 over the last two years. People do throw them out uh, just because they don't have storage for them or they are just not going to garden anymore. So you, just with a little, uh, little searching on junk day, you can find pretty much any tomato cage you want to use in your garden. Understanding the back of your seed packets can greatly improve the success of your garden come this spring. Here is an example of some of the seed packets that are on the market today. These two here have a map on the back of them. That map indicates the last average frost date in your area. That is information that you need to know in order to plant successful seeds without them dying. Over here are seed packets that don't provide that map. But in the wording, it does indicate how many days before the last frost or after the last frost date you can plant. If there's not a map provided, you can also search on the internet for a map and as well as books and magazines will provide a map that will indicate when your frost date, the last average frost date is in your area. Also on these seed packets, there's information that's valuable as to how deep to plant your seed, how many days it will take for that seed to sprout, and the days of maturity to, that plant will take before it will produce fruit. Over here, it tells you if you're gonna plant the seed indoors, how long before the last frost date you can do that. Two to three weeks before the last frost date. So you can get a jump start on the seeds before you put them out. Up here you have a seed packet that has the information as well as a uh, area that you can cut out and put on a stake and put in the garden. So there's much information, there's a lot of information the seed packets that you need to know when it comes to growing them. So just take a few minutes before you plant your seed and read the back of your seed packet. Whether you save seeds or you've opened a seed packet and you want to preserve them until next year, here are some options. You've got your traditional pill bottles that you can save seeds on. Now the key to saving seeds is simply writing on what, what they are. That is our leeks the second generation of leeks that we have. We've got some snap peas that we saved and uh, some large bottom gourds that we saved. So there's, there's an option for you. Breath mints 
container. Works really well, stacks uh, very nicely in your seed box, and when you want them, you can simply just tip them open and get however many you want out and close it real nicely. Another form of a pill bottle, stacks nice when there's multiples of them. Uh, if, for those of you who still use film canisters or have a lot laying around, those work very well. Uh, also, we've got your powdered drink mix container. This has our apple gourd seeds in it. Uh, if you have a large quantity of seeds, that's a uh, good thing to use. Spice containers that you are about to throw in the kitchen. Also a good uh, way of saving seeds. That's got our sunflowers in it. Dinner container, a uh, microwavable container that had some turkey in it, works well. It's two layers. Our top one has our green pumpkin, the bottom has our blue Hubbard squash. Very uh, nice way to store two, seed, two uh, varieties of seeds in one, one uh, container. Nothing else fails, you have your uh, resealable bag. Uh, you want to take a permanent marker and write on the bag what the uh, product is in there. If you want to really get creative, you can go online and search. There are certain websites that you can create your own seed packets with. Drop it on a, a typing program on your computer, and you can take an, a picture of the seed or the, the, the product that you're saving, and you can type in on the back all the information that is needed to plan it and some of the tips to planning it, and you can give it as gifts to your friends and family, whether for their birthday, anniversary, or Christmas. Just some of the different ways you can save the seeds from year to year. There's many different areas in the home where people can store their canning goods. Some people store them in the garage, in the closet, or even under their own bed. For us, it works best in the basement. The key to having good storage is keeping out of direct sunlight. Right here we have our, our wooden shelves, our 2011 harvest. And on the wooden shelves, you want to be sure to reinforce the bottoms that it doesn't collapse in on itself. Over here we have our 2010 harvest that we're still eating off of on a metal shelf we picked up along the side of the road. Again, your key issue is weight. You want to be careful not to overweight your sh shelves so that you don't break your canning jars. Just some of the few options you have when storing canning goods in the home. One of the tips I, I will give you that's one of the most important things about harvesting vegetables in your garden, whether it's you or your children, is to cut the fruit from the vine or the vegetable from the vine rather than trying to tear it away. If you try to pull it, you're going to pull the whole plant out of the ground. So set your produce in one hand while cutting it free from the plant with the other. A sharp cutting device makes the job very easy. A pair of snips and pull it loose so you have a clean cut, you haven't damaged the vegetable, and you haven't stressed the plant by possibly tearing the roots out of the ground. So always carry a pair of snips, scissors, or a knife with you when you go to the garden. Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Just weeding the strawberry patch for next spring. You know, a tomato cage is an important aspect of growing tomatoes, and whether you find them or buy them, it's something you need to have. And reading the back of that seed packet gives you more information than just the picture on the front. Well, for all of us at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Joy Baird, reminding you to take a child gardening and start growing some memories. The show doesn't have to end here. Go to our Facebook page and like it, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners, and continue the discussion there. You can also email us with your comments, suggestions, or questions about the show at the WI Veg Gardener at gmail.com and we may use your question on an upcoming show.